Animal bites, take them seriously. Around 64% of Australian households have a pet. Many Australians report an animal bite at least once in their lifetime. Around 100,000 Australians are bitten by dogs each year, 13,000 of those injured needing medical treatment. 85 to 90 percent of animal bites are dog bites with children under the age of five being at the greatest risk of a bite, usually on the face. Adults tend to be bitten by freely roaming dogs on the upper arms. Around 18 percent of dog bites become infected. Only 10 percent of animal bites are cat bites which are often unprovoked. 28 to 80 percent of the wounds become infected the majority with Pasteur multocida. Cat scratch fever caused by the Proteobacterium Bartonella hensley can be transmitted by the bite of an infected cat or cat flea. Human bites account for 2 to 3 percent of all bites with males between 16 and 25 being at greatest risk of being bitten. Infected human bites may contain Streptococcus, Staph, Aureus or Iconella caridans. Any human bite should be treated seriously especially if it is bleeding, even slightly. 2 to 3 percent of animal bites are caused by rodents, 10 percent of which become infected, one infection. Rat bite fever is caused by Streptobacillus moniliformis and is characterized by a triad of fever, rash and arthritis. In Australia, people who handle bats are at risk of Australian bat Lysa virus infection. The ABL virus is related to rabies and carried by bats but is not spread to native or domesticated animals. Although it rarely infects humans, there have been three fatal cases of ABL infection in Australia in the mid-1990s and 2013s. The management of animal bites. Document fang penetration. X-ray the bite. Treat infected wounds. Administer tetanus booster. Patient education. Document fang penetration. Animal fangs can inoculate bacteria into deep tissues like bones, vessels, tendons, muscle and nerves. Dog bites cause crushing wounds because of their rounded teeth and strong jaws. The sharp, pointed teeth of cats cause puncture wounds and lacerations that may inoculate bacteria into deep tissues. X-ray the bite area to exclude occult or hidden fractures, bone penetration and animal tooth remnants. Medical imaging is always indicated for hand wounds, deep punctures, crushing bites and bites over joints. X-rays may also show signs of osteomyelitis. Treat infected wounds. Bites on the hand have a high risk of infection because many structures in the hand have a poor blood supply. In general, the better the vascular supply, the easier a wound is to clean. This is the reason why lacerations have a lower risk of infection than puncture wounds. Administer tetanus booster. If a booster has not been given in the past year, patients who may not have been immunized should receive tetanus immune globulin. Educate patients about prevention of animal bites. Teach children to approach unfamiliar pets with caution and to wash hands carefully after handling pets. Educate on early signs of infection in bite wounds and ensure patient returns within 24 to 48 hours for a review of the wound. To suture or not? 
Animal bites should be cleaned under pressure with copious amounts of saline or water. Primary closure or suturing of wounds should only be considered in bite wounds that can be cleansed effectively. Bites to the hands and lower extremities which have not been cleaned within 10 hours of the bite should be left open. Delayed primary closure is also recommended for patients who are immunosuppressed.